All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Serious Angler Podcast, powered by our friends over at X2 Power Batteries. We're back with the captain, Mr. Andy Full, and as always, I'm your host, Bailey Egbert. Andy, what's going on, my man? Oh, not too much. Had a guide trip this morning. Fishing was subpar due to, like, everything that could be bad in a day was bad, so we had like a Cinco Facto, like five things wrong, and it was great. But still got some big fish, so I'm not going to complain. What's up with you? Your your boat's floating, so not everything. Yeah, it it was no boat issues. It was just like, (laughs) you know, super moon, lake flip, super crazy cold front, north wind, and bright blue skies. So like everything everything that you don't want. For the first like transition in the fall to happen, and eh, started the day with a five pounder, so I don't have a ton to complain about. But we only got ten <laughs> fish complaining out of here. <laughs> the so, fish like, stuff that starts with a five. Yeah, out of here. we caught a five, like I think ten casts in, and then nothing for two and a half hours. So Good grief. Yeah, and then we caught six in like thirty minutes, and then nothing for two more hours. I have been thoroughly on that topic. I've been thoroughly enjoying waking up and going outside at like six in the morning and freezing. Oh yeah. I walked outside this morning with shorts and a sun shirt on from Blackfish. And I was like, I turned around, went right back inside, put pants on and a hoodie. And I was like, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> it's a nice feeling because you're like the fall's coming and like I'm just looking at it and like, please, can we first we have that first cold front right freaking now because yeah. States uh, here is in two weeks, and I in the extended forecast a couple of weeks back said that the first cold front of the fall was going to be literally on the weekend we had state championships. And everybody that knows that first cold front, literally, the fishing is the worst time between that summer to fall. So, if we can get past the first one and then have a cold another cold front on state championships, that'll make the fishing really good once those fish kind of realize, hey. It's time to get chewing because the first one that's kind of like that shock factor. They don't know what the heck to do. No one catches anything. So yeah. hoping that's the case. But uh dude, it was a lot of fun this past week. The episode that we dropped yesterday, uh I shouldn't say yesterday, you're listening on Friday, two days ago, Wednesday, uh this past week with the Shriac brothers. We uh went up to the St. Lawrence River, had a really good content shoot with the X2 Power folks. We had uh there's a lot of cool content coming on the X2 Power YouTube page. Uh if you I'll let you guys know once the videos go up, but uh, you have to wait to see if I whooped up on Mr. Josh Douglas or not. Uh, there's some definitely some trash talking when you get two hockey boys in the same boat that are supposed to compete 1v1. There was uh, many hip checks trying to get whoever got control of active target, which was kind of fun. Uh, because, you know, the way they're fishing in Ontario right now, it's like if you're not the one pitching at them on live, you ain't catching them. <laughs> yeah, not one bit. It's a shot and a prayer. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. We got to make fun of uh, Hunter and Fletcher for a little bit too, because they were in a boat and they were supposed to do it one v one. But for whatever reason, they took it they, as they were supposed to be on the same team. So they're like supporting each other, like like Fletcher, throw here, throw here. They're like working as a team. So we made fun of them pretty good that that it was actually a one v one in your boat. I don't know how it went right over their heads, but uh, <laughs> regardless, <laughs> you guys will have to listen to that episode. It was really good. We had. Hunter talking about literally running away from the cartel in on Lake Falcon. So like there were some damn good stories. Like Fletcher's almost sinking his boat in an open. Like it was it was pretty good. And we're we're really trying to do more of those, those in person stuff because that creates for some really cool environment, cool content. Uh, and just like we're gonna be doing today with the Omnia boys, we got Mr. Trevor Lowe uh, and Luke Lowey. I believe I pronounced that right. If I didn't, he can butcher me when he gets on here. Uh, but regardless, I'm excited to talk to him. This first Luke's first time on the show. Definitely got some questions for him. One in regards to fishing, two in regards to some cool news coming from the boys at Omni, and three also just being a college athlete. Uh, I'm very curious to ask him some questions here. But um, one thing we wanted to let the folks know, and you see, Andy and I are both rocking some some blackfish gear. Uh, blackfish is now on Omni fishing, so you guys know we've always tooted their horn because we love all their stuff. Being Northerners, they have everything you need as a Northerner to stay warm and dry. But we've never been able to provide you guys with a, a discount towards their gear, and now we can. So you can do it Omnia Fishing. So like when we talk about all the gear that you guys go directly to Omnia and buy it and get to save some money, 
now you can save some money on some uh, some sun hoodies and some winter apparel. So make sure you guys are doing so if you're looking to save a few bucks on some top notch stuff. Uh, and talking about top notch, I didn't think the Omni app could get better. We're gonna get into that today. Oh man, it's ridiculous how good it's getting. The technology is insane. Just a little pre like previewing of what's coming. Yeah, but, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit. So we'll, we'll sneak peek, a little tease of what they're going to unveil for us. But uh, regardless, I'm excited to talk to these boys. Let's get them on here. Mr. Trevor Lowe and Mr. Luke Lowey. What's going on, fellas? What is up, oh, guys? Good to be back. Yeah. Good to have you. First time. Oh, yeah. L- Luke's first time in the Sears Stangler show. Yeah, he's probably well. like, I'm never coming back ever again. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, he's driving away right now. So, yeah, yeah. I'm out he's, of here. He's kind of moving towards you guys. He's moving oh, away nice. from, from Omnia towards you guys. So, I, Are you going fishing, Luke? I will be going fishing, yes. I'm actually practicing for a tournament tomorrow. I'm taking the day off. Hey, oh, okay. Mm. There you go. Good things. All good things. Heck yeah. Is it going to be brown, green? What kind of dirt are we talking? A little bit of both. Uh, it's going to be tough, though. It's going to take, it only takes like 12 to 14 pounds to win, but it can be done with brown or green. So it's going to be kind of interesting. So you're saying there's a chance. I like it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, All Trevor, you've been doing some fishing? Um, Not a whole lot. I just, I just got my boat back. So that's a, that's a win in my book. Um, but no, just Omni has been keeping me busy uh, and just, you know, obviously having a, a young, uh, she is still an infant or is she a toddler now? I don't know. She's, she's almost 13 months. So a year and a month. Um, but that uh, she's that, almost a toddler. I, yeah, I put that toddler. at toddler age. Cause now she's probably walking or just about right. Yeah. Just about to. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a, uh, you know, long days at the office at Omnia and, you know, trying to, wanting to get home and spend as much time with her because she goes to bed kind of early. So um, not a whole lot of fishing, but we did get out in the water yesterday, Luke and I, and another one of our content guys um, to, to do some content for Omnia. So uh, yeah, it was kind of nice to hook into some fish. Didn't catch as many as Luke did, but. Yeah, is he, is fun. he the hammer of the office? He's uh he's our live scope guru. Okay. So, All yeah. right. I like, I like it. it. Yeah. One thing I do love oh, about your guys' platform is that, like, there's always a new face, it seems. Like, obviously, Pete's on there a bunch. Trevor, you're on there a bunch. But, like, you ever know your scroll and Omnia a reel comes up? You guys are talking about a new bait or technique or a sale. And it's like a new face. And then Andy and I are like, oh, man, we got to learn more about these guys. Like, we don't know who this is. Who's this guy? <laughs> like, um, to try although to the new Seth everybody. commercial was absolutely hilarious. I was laughing through that one when he put the football in the box. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah, that was a uh, that was an idea that was kind of constructed by uh, our CEO. But yeah, definitely uh, it, we wanted to incorporate Seth into that a little bit because he is he is a huge part of Omnia and the inception of Omnia. So uh, pretty cool. And yeah, a lot of people, you know, they don't get to see the behind the scenes of Seth or uh, the off stage of Seth, but he's he's pretty funny. There's there's no question about it. Pretty funny guy. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. I was actually pretty intimidating. I went on a, a photo shoot with the TH Marine folk and it was just cause they wanted to get some kayak content and all that. And I was met, met them in Florida and, uh, they're like, yeah, it might be you and a couple other guys like Gussie or anything like that. And I, I'm, you know, decent friends with Gussie. So I wasn't like too uncomfortable and turned out, uh, some, some guys couldn't make it. And it was just, uh, it was just me and Seth. And I was like, and I, I had talked to Seth a couple times, but it was always like over the phone for like PR stuff. And I was like super intimidated at first because it's like big bad Seth. He's kind of quiet. Like, I didn't know, like, should I bother him? Should I not bother him? And I'm like rolling my kayak down like a nerd to the, to the lake too. And he's back in his boat down and I look like such a dork. And it was, it was pretty funny though. Cause he's only asking so many questions about the kayak. And I'm like, Oh, this dude's chill as hell. So it was pretty funny, but yeah, I didn't think I'd ever see him in a suit beyond the Night of Champions for the classic. But I don't know what you guys got him to do or had to do to get him to do that. But I'm pretty sure that was his idea. They're coming in suit. Seriously, yeah, really, that's Damn. fantastic. Yeah, that was a good looking suit. Yeah, Pete always jokes that that's the only suit he owns, um, which might be true, might not be true. <laughs> hey, it's one more than I own. No, good yeah. <laughs> oh, that's man. awesome. Heck yeah. Well. Uh, 
I got to say, the dynamic, though, of your guys' office has to be pretty fun because you all seem to be very fishy people. Uh, all seem to be go-getters. You know your stuff. And I think, one, it comes from the content, obviously, is very educational. You guys have, of course, you're, you're pushing tackle, you're pushing your products, but I feel like you do so in a meaningful way in regards to you're actually strategic about it. Like, there's some tackle shops you go around and, you know, they might have good stuff, but, like, they have somebody that's, like, their buddy, that's, like, their buyer, like, that helps them make decisions. You can tell they have no idea what they're talking about. But uh, it's 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 nice to see the content from the, the sales, but also education kind of meet at the middle. And you guys obviously seem to have a lot of fun with it. A little behind-the-scenes story stuff, too, uh, are pretty cool, like some of the office shenanigans that you guys do. Yeah, I think uh, you're exactly right on that. Um, obviously, Pete is our head of merchandising, so, you know, he – he has a lot to do with the product assortment, uh, which, which brands we started, we start to carry, which products we bring in stock. Um, but definitely, you know, we have to pair that with marketing, uh, which I'm a part of the marketing team. Luke's a part of the marketing team. So, you know, having that cohesiveness between both sides of that, the company is important because, uh, you know, at times it, it can seem like, you know, one company wants to one part, one, uh, part of the company wants to go this direction. The other one wants to go this direction, but we got to work together to make sure that, you know, everybody is aligning on things to make, make us as successful as possible. So, um, you know, we try to keep that line of communication open just so, yeah, we, we don't miss a step anywhere and, and we don't end up with egg on our face, you know? So, um, but yeah, everybody, you know, for the most part at Omnia is, um, you know, a fish head to, to some degree. Um, mm -hmm. I think the only ones that really aren't, and they probably are some of the most valuable are the, the development team, you know, um, they're, they're more into their technology stuff and the, uh, you know, the, the behind the scenes stuff to, to keep the whole, uh, operation operating system running and everything like that. But, um, you know, I think if given the opportunity, they would wholeheartedly, uh, take it to get out on the boat with us. So. Heck yeah. So, Luke, is that what you went to school for then, is marketing? Nope. nope. What did you end up going to school for? Uh, I went to school, my undergrad was in kinesiology while I played basketball, and then I got my master's in sports management in football. Like, not even. I love it. I was kind of, <laughs> I kind of started my own YouTube stuff, learned how to film and edit through internships. And there was a lot of stuff up with help from the industry stuff. Just what I love to do, just be around and stuff. So it's kind of how I like it. I love it. From kinesiology to working for Omnia Fishing. I love that progression. I'll take it however you can. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, so, I mean, Luke, it is your first time on the show. And for everybody that is their first time, we got to talk about how the heck you got even into fishing in the first place. And playing Division One basketball, I feel like that's quite the uh, – I want to say get in the way, but quite a distraction from obviously the, from going fishing. And I see, you know, fishing collegiately too. I'm very curious from the start of how you got into it, working up to how the heck you fished in college and also played basketball. I'm curious about that dynamic. Yeah. So, so uh, it might be losing them. It's quite this the freeze frame here too. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a rough one. <laughs> Trevor screenshot for blackmail. Yeah. <laughs> Put it around the uh, my dad taught me a ton of like basically. Uh oh. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, here, we'll we'll we, back him out until his, his connection comes back. <laughs> give him one opportunity while he's driving, you know. Get one yeah. chance. Get his one <laughs> shot on the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought he was supposed to be the technology guru, and he goes and messes it up. Uh, he's uh, he's that uh, forward-facing sonar technology guru. Yeah. yeah. Different tech. Different tech. Different kind of tech. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while we wait for him to come back, because it still like looks like he's in eye roll phase. Um, <laughs> he, he he totally just didn't like what Trevor was saying. That, that was right. why he's rolling his eyes. Yeah. Um, is it? Are you guys going through that summer to fall transition out by you in the Midwest? Yeah, I think, um, you know, early August is right our peak of summer. Um, yesterday we were out shooting content and yeah, you know, kind of to Andy's point, uh, we got out in the morning and I was like in shorts and, a, you know, just a sun shirt. And I was like, it's kind of cold out here, guys. You know, like 
like it was like low 60s and i mean i'm not complaining about low 60s but i was like it's it's a little nippy out here guys like (laughs) (laughs) things are a changing yeah for sure well we had him back. It was working, but now his camera's frozen again, so I don't know if we're able to hear him. <laughs> he's definitely going through some backwoods. Yeah, he's uh, he. I bet you he's crossing the border from uh, Minnesota to Wisconsin because, you know, everything's not great in Wisconsin. I'm going to get some people throwing some shade at me for that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> my, my, wife's a, my wife's a Wisconsin native, and I, I joke every time she we come back from uh, Wisconsin and we cross the border, I'm like, Wow, the air smells so much nicer over here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, you cross over. Can you hear that? Or can you smell that? Fresh air. Nice. Yeah. yeah. There's there's less cheese, cheese in the air. Yeah. yeah. Less cheese and beer. Well, maybe yeah. just as much beer. Either way. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's just as much yeah. beer in Minnesota. <laughs> I will say so uh on the last day of our, our X2 power shoot, I was telling Trevor this a little bit offline. But uh, we got done with some stuff early, and they got like most of the shots they wanted. And they're like, "Hey, if you guys want to go fun fish for rest of the day, by all means, go." And uh, Justin Hamner was like, "Hey, I'm going to Canada, and I got an open seat. I'm like, you want to come?" I'm like, "Are you freaking kidding me? Hell yeah, I'm coming!" And uh, so we rode about an hour into Canada, and uh, we we roll up on the first spot and like just put live down and we started giggling like little kids because we knew it was about to happen. We both bowed up first cast each, and it was. Regardless, it was an amazing time. But my, my point of that story is I've noticed I got no seller service because I was in Canada. So I had nothing to reach and I didn't. So I couldn't use my phone. And it was a nice, refreshing pace of I have no choice but to put my phone away for the, the day. I don't have to work, do nothing. Uh, it was like you're talking about refreshing breath of, uh, of fresh air. And yeah, that was that was nice. This past Tuesday. Good for the small. It was. It was. I turned my phone off for the first time. I don't know the last time. My phone's ever been turned off, <laughs> to be honest with you. So it was like, it was kind of nice, to be honest. It was, it was. I think it helps that you're catching big brown ones too, though, for sure. Oh. Yeah. Like I didn't need a distraction, anyways. Like, right. right. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't, yeah. It wasn't like no cell service and, you know, you're in a room full of tarantulas crawling on you. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice to be around fish that you pitched at them. And like we'd be in like forty foot of water, and some of them would be suspended. It seemed like all the suspended fish were bigger ones, and the ones towards bottom are like your three pounders. And you pitch on one, it's suspended, and it would follow it like from twenty feet all the way down to the bottom. And then sometimes what was crazy with uh, because he's got that live scope plus transducer, you watch your drop shot go down, eat the bait, and you'd see him swimming. You see the drop shot wait under their under their mouth. Oh wow. And you're like, this is freaking nuts. You have to really yeah. catch up to him. And it was, it was pretty yeah, cool. I've got a, I think I, I need to upgrade to that LBS 34, man, because uh, I have the 32 and Luke and I were messing with it on, on the water yesterday. And it's just like, it's not that you can't see the bait, but you really got to like line up that deucer perfectly to see your bait go down. And, and uh, from, from what he was saying, like I said, he's our live scope guru, but um He's like, yeah, the 34 makes a world of difference. So it was pretty wild. Do we got you back now, Luke? I think so. I think I'm back. So sorry about that. Hey, we got him. <laughs> Welcome. All right. back. We didn't we didn't take any uh screenshots of your freeze frames or anything like that, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I hope you didn't read my lips. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh. If you see any pictures around the office, we're sorry. Oh, I guess. Okay. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. So I guess, uh, honestly, run, run it back real fast for us in regards to how the heck you got into fishing and all the way up to uh, fishing in college. Yeah, so I grew up fishing with my dad. He was a big tournament fisherman around the state of Wisconsin. And he would take me out with him. We started fishing a couple of tournaments together when I was really young. Um, and then he actually started a youth club that I could fish uh, TBF Youth Series uh, in the city of Wisconsin, um, and that was as I was getting into high school. Uh, there was so I was fishing a lot, but also playing a ton of basketball. Played year year round basketball, AAU, and school ball. So pretty busy with that. And then uh, when I was 14, I actually I won the Wisconsin TBF State Championship, and then made it to the uh, World Championship in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. And went down there 
And actually on the way down, we stopped in Nashville for like an elite 150 camp I got invited to through AU. Like got the birds of one stone and then went down to the tournament and then, uh, and then end, ended up actually winning the youth TBF world championship when I was 14. And then from then on, it was like basketball kind of took over because I was going into high school, recruiting started a little bit, so I didn't get to do a ton of tournament fishing. So I was playing basketball all summer and then ended up going to college to play um, Division One on scholarship. So that was kind of always my dream and fishing kind of took the backseat. Uh, but I ended up going out to Williamsburg, which is uh, which, well, I went to William & Mary, which is in Lewisburg, Virginia, which is probably an hour south of Richmond. So the Chickahominy River was really close to me. And Lake Chickahominy, there was a bunch of really good reservoirs. So I started fishing again in college a ton. Some really good fishing down there. And when I ended up graduate transferring to Minnesota, um, I always wanted to fish in college because I would literally during the middle of the season just be following the, the college bass and I watching the tournaments. And then because of COVID, I got the chance to have a fifth year and then knew that I wanted to see if after the season was over, if I could fish in college. So I guess we have to one really good Minnesota. So. And then it's kind of, I always knew I wanted to be in the fishing industry and just love fishing. That's awesome. That That's, that's honestly a similar story to over a lot of guys you hear like, um, you know, like Dustin Bufflin growing up playing hockey, but also Big buff. Yeah, yeah, playing playing hockey, but also fishing hardcore. Like it's that's pretty cool, man. And obviously, yeah. you know, got to chase the dream, made that to that D one level. But uh, the nice thing about fishing is never it's it's never going to leave you. You can only play basketball competitively for so long. You know, that's yeah. the one cool thing is competitive fishing. You can do it to. I mean, look at Rick Clun. You got a lot of years left. <laughs> I know. So, I I it's starting to slow down for basketball. If I was thrown back on the court, I don't think I could play. Like, my body is done with that. It's, uh, it's in fishing shape, but not basketball shape anymore. <laughs> Luke, you're good. done with that. Go to the fish. <laughs> Your boat body you is here. Kids. Wait till you have kids and you get into dad shape. <laughs> I resonate hard with that one, Trevor. Yes. <laughs> I knew you would. <laughs> Try to hold off on that one, Trevor. You see, you probably already got the crooked neck from the live scope. Now you just have the belly. Yeah, I'm going to have scoliosis. It's nice. yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something to be said about like live scope pain. It's like the Don't weirdest pain. back pain you'll ever have in your life because it's like in between the shoulder blades to like your lower neck. And it just never goes away. Mm-hmm. Especially once you have kids because they always want to be held. So you're like constantly looking down all the time. <laughs> yeah. Problem. There's going to be some fish for 20 years that have serious spine issues. Yeah. We're yeah. going to see, like, a mutation of human bodies from the fishermen to, like, average athletes because all the fishermen are going to have kids that are born, like, slightly bent forward. Oh, <laughs> 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 spine I mean, curvature. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, it's, it's, ahead, it's funny you guys mentioned that because, like, I've been having like really bad headaches that run up the left side of my neck. And I actually went to go get an MRI done on my head and my neck. And it turns out I have uh, minor arthritis in like my C6 disc and my C7 disc. And I'm just like, dude, what is that from? You know, and live scoping and maybe, maybe it's, it's scoping and looking at 360 too much, man. Oh God. And I, I talk to Bailey about this all the time. I'm like, I just want to go largemouth fishing because I can turn right. the electronics off and actually look up. Yeah. It's like a nice refreshing breath of fresh sure. air when I can actually look up. Like today I caught myself looking at a kingfisher, a bald eagle, and an osprey. And I'm like, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> the world. Look at that. I don't see a yeah. screen anymore. Green <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't see birds on live scope too often. Sometimes loons. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see loons. <laughs> yeah. Nothing above, nothing above either... the water. Right. Uh, I think either all the guys are going to be running, like, those crappie mounts that are, like, five feet up, or you're going to have, like, at age 40, Patrick Walters is just going to have a neck brace while he's fishing tournaments. <laughs> it's just it's going to be one or the other. <laughs> so by the time – 
by the time Patrick Walters hits 40, there's probably going to be glasses out. Yeah, for sure. So, and you're going to have like an Oculus VR experience while fishing live scope. Yeah. Well, and here's a question. So, I kind of on topic with that, but like at, at the moment right now, uh, you know, talking about Patrick Walters, who do you guys think in your personal opinion, just from watching events, but also, you know, obviously you guys get to talk with a bunch of the pros. Who do you think is the best forward facing sonar angler right now? I, uh, I gave Luke my, my answer like last week or something like that. We were, we were making our St. Lawrence picks. Uh, we have like an office fantasy fishing kind of dollar bet weekly deal. And, um, Man, I tell you, Cody Huff is pretty dang good with that forward-facing sonar, man. <laughs> Kid is um, filthy. Yeah, he, he's he got that – there's that video of him. I can't remember if it's like a wired-to-fish video deal or something like that. But, dude, he's picking off like largemouth on Table Rock or Ozarks or wherever that was in like 60 foot of water. And he's just dropping right on their nose and just – there's another one. It's like, yeah, he's a, he's a monster with that stuff. I'd probably say him. Koyo's pretty good too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Helps when you have five transducers though. Yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> He's no slouch. Yeah, I mean, I, so talking with the a couple of the guys um this past week, the general consensus was like they're all like talking about Koyo, like Koyo gonna be a problem <laughs> like <laughs> we're <For> sure <laughs> yeah and he's gonna For catch sure. him all with dice and crabs <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so they're saying that he i would love to to get him on the show um in regards to the guys are saying he's like probably one of the sneakiest anglers that they've ever met like justin hamner was telling me one thing he's like he's like the day i knew i kind of sucked was like i pulled off the ramp and i saw koya in his boat He's got his laptop out and he's typing his notes for the day. And then every time he leaves and comes back from the boat ramp, there's no baits whatsoever. His boat is sparkling clean. He cleans up all the excess so that you can't get a, an, like, cause you, some guys you could tell if they're catching them, if there's like 30 beavers in their boat, something <laughs> like that on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and but, they stay there for like three weeks. So like they don't move. <laughs> he was like, he's like, I can't figure out what this kid's doing. So he's like, one day he goes, he pulls up to weigh in. And he's like, it's after a long day of fishing. He goes, okay, I got him. He's bringing his boat or his uh, his bag of fish up to uh, to weigh in. He goes, I'm gonna go scope out his boat because every angler always leaves baits at the bottom. He goes, I go over to his boat and it's like he took it through the the car wash already. He's like, there's <laughs> nothing there. I can't figure it out. But without going like snooping through his boat, uh, it's like apparently he's like super super sneaky. And I'm like, this is pretty dang cool. It's a, uh, it's all a ploy. He actually speaks English perfectly fine. But yeah, he yeah. Want to tell anybody his baits. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Yeah. Opens up the laptop. It's all in Japanese. <laughs> can't read a thing. Yeah, can't read. They, they get his laptop, but it's just useless. <laughs> yeah. no... He's like, I know how to change it from translate Japanese to English. So right. like, walk away, I go back to English. Yeah. Like... <laughs> you guys, uh, did you guys see his little spring scale? Yeah, I don't get fish? What what's up with that? <laughs> because he's pretty dead on. Because he does what he doesn't do like the four and a quarter type yeah. stuff that most guys do. Like his weights are pretty accurate. Yeah, I was just I was surprised that it looks like a spring scale. It does. Like, who's using that nowadays? Maybe it's quicker because he doesn't have to mess with it, like bouncing between ounces and locking in or something. Maybe he's just kind of like, all right, four and a quarter. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. That's pretty interesting. But yeah. uh, Luke, what do you think? Who do you think is the best forward facing sonar angler as of right now? I think, I mean, I Patrick is up there. I, I got to show some love to Jay, though. Shakira, Wisconsin guy. Mm. He's sneaky. Shakira? Okay. He's, uh, He's fishing a lot on my home lake in Wisconsin Green Lake. It's it's like a 300 foot lake, and it's a lake you can drink five scope really well. He, he goes out there, no practice, and just makes sure he's out there all the time. So, <laughs> I'm kind of jealous about it, and I want to beat him like in the future, but he's a really good person. Never yeah. Patrick. There's definitely a handful from that, that region. The Midwest is making some hay the past couple years on, on tour. Um, Andy, what do you think for best scoper? Yeah. Oh man, there's there's such like a difference, right? Like when you jump from level to level, like how good guys are. It's definitely Patrick Walters. He's dominated with it for like three years, 
and he just won the St. Lawrence. So that tells you how good he is. So American born is definitely Patrick Walters. Oh, we're going by Nan. By yeah, right now. <laughs> Japan. I'm I'm sticking with Koyo. Like that guy. Just even though he's got five on him, like to show up to the U.S. He's been here for what, probably two or three years now. Qualified, got to the leads, and then put literally everybody on notice, just scoping everything. And catching them on baits that we never even thought would catch bass. So it's like, yeah, that's pretty remarkable. And maybe it's just telling us that we overthink it like always, right? Like, it's a crab. They're going to eat a crab. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's pretty intriguing. I, I, I'll, I'll go with a different one here. And I think in in the coming years, it'll either confirm or deny. But I'm going to go with Joyce Fuentes. Yeah, well, that's, a good, that's a good pick. Gosh, he's a sneaky one, too. A sneak, another sneaky one, Luke Palmer, because he was yeah. that bastard is getting good with cypress trees. Like that, yeah. that's impressive. Well, and and smallmouth. Yeah, <laughs> top ten at St. Clair. What the hell? You? What's this Oklahoma boy doing in the top ten in the smallmouth? Yeah. They're, it's, it's going to be small. wild for the classic next year when they're on Grand and they're all scoping them with crankbaits on like rock rock banks. So that one's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, and that's to your point. You know, those those fish on Grand in the springtime are going to be, you know, hugging that bank. So I'm I'm curious to see how much forward facing sonar is really going to play, or if it's not going to play all that much, and you know, some power fisherman is going to go and just burn the bank and just whoop them. Who knows? But Good. They did we? Uh, so w was this question poised as elite series angler, or was it just anglers? Just anglers in general. I'm surprised. Yeah. Like. We Milliken like, kind of fell through the cracks. Milliken, I mean, I think there's a couple of them we missed, like big ones, like Milliken, Wheeler, Connell. I yeah, think those are some. For sure. yeah, big we'll ones. I think we're going off a of relevancy bias because that's literally what we saw for sure. the past three events yeah. in the elites. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where the last event for BPT, they're all like flipping bushes, which was which was actually pretty fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, don't, I feel like I feel like we'd all say one, and then we'll think about it for the next ten minutes. I'll be like, oh, well, he's pretty good, too. Uh, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of it happen. And once you get to, like, a certain amount of time with it, I feel like the more time you put in and you understand where you're casting, like, you you can take incremental steps with it. And once you, like, understand how far a cast actually is, mm -hmm. it's like, that's the biggest thing in understanding where your transducer is. Because anybody can cast 20, 30, 40 feet, it's putting it right in that cone on the fish. Because that beam is so small going out, it that's yeah. the hardest part. Well, I think I think I think it's well beyond that. I think the all the guys we're talking about are ridiculously good from an accuracy standpoint. I think there's an upper echelon above that though. Are guys that are thinking outside the box on where they can use it in ways that are more efficient than the rest of the crowd. Where every guy is going to know how to use four facing sonar for the most part on MLF or bass like from a, and especially from an accuracy standpoint, but I think there's a small number like a Walters, a Koya, especially that are like, that are using it very uniquely and are finding new ways to use it. That surprise everybody. Yep. And you're like, there's no way everyone's like, Oh, the jerk bait and everything. Now we're seeing the Demiki raid come back like yeah. roaring back. You know what I'm waiting for is that guy that they have it on live and he's catching him on a spook and he can like, speed it up or slow it down based on the way the fish is tracing the bait. Like that's what I want to see next. Yeah. That's a whole discussion we can get into another day. Cause Ford, if we keep talking about this, we're going to start talking about Ford face for the next three hours. <laughs> yeah. so I'm all and for and then we're going to get like show. 300 comments on how to be banned from the top tour level. So like yeah. <laughs> yeah. whole can of worms. Oh, for sure. Well, talking about can of worms, you guys are about to open up a whole can of worms with uh, the new premium pro feature. And, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's unlock this and let, uh, tell us what it's all about. Guys. Yeah, we've got a, so we've got a new app subscription that we just launched um, to your point. It's, it's called premium pro. Um, and it basically, you get everything that premium has to offer. And on top of that, you've got uh what we call our premium pro map layers. So um, super interesting stuff. A lot of it is uh, derived from, uh, I guess, community data with uh, CMAP, which if you use Lawrence, you might be familiar with that. 
Um, but a lot of it is community driven data. So uh, do you do you do you have those screenshots ready? Uh, I can kind of walk through them a little bit. Which one would you like me to share first? You, you can go with any one and I can just kind of highlight what it is just to make it a little easier. Let's see. Pick one here. Let's go. Uh, this pops out first. Bang. Okay. So this particular map layer, this is bottom hardness. Um, so you can see different color gradients. Uh, there's a, obviously this is a screenshot, so you don't have the interactive tools, but up in the upper left, it says, it says legend there. Uh, and if you were to click that on the app, you know, you can see uh, kind of the color gradients, but yellow is going to be softer. Orange is going to be a little bit harder than that. And your reds are going to be, you know, your hard bottom. So um, this is a, uh, this is a particular bay in Minnetonka and absolutely this, this matches what is uh, on that bay. Uh, I guess me being somebody who's fished it quite a bit, you know, I know that those are exactly the hard spots on the bottom and different, uh, different areas of the lake are going to be, uh, you know, softer or more muckier. Um, if you go to the next one, um, so that's, that's our bottom hardness layer. If you go to the next one, uh, I should have, I think, three screenshots using that particular bay as an example. Um, okay, right there. So, yep, so there's your contour layer. So that's another layer. Um, like I said, it's uh, it looks kind of like the, the contour lines look a little spaced out here. Um, but in the actual app, you know, as you zoom in, those lines are super, super defined. Um, like I said, this is community data that's that's provided by people actually going out on the water, using their transducers and graphing the lake for you. So all the contours are super, super close. It's very, very detailed as you zoom in. Um, but like I said, you can take this and as you would expect all your high spots, um, you know, points, you know, steep banks, that's gonna be where your hard bottom is. And those big deep bowls in the middle of the lake um, or those long shallow flats are, you know, up here in the Midwest, a lot of it, or in Minnesota, a lot of it turns into like lily pad muck and mud fields. Um, so you can see that that directly corresponds with the uh, bottom hardness layer. And so we will, uh, we're, we're constantly improving the app right now. We're taking in suggestions from people um, that have, that have subscribed and are sending in their feedback to us. So we're always looking to make it better. So the, with our next uh, update, we look to add contour layers on top of the bottom hardness uh, layer so that you can really see that, you know, in this particular uh, part of the lake, hard bottom is here because it corresponds to a contour change or, or so on and so forth or a high spot. Um, but that's, those are two of the layers we've got. We've got a couple other layers. We've got weather layers, you know, we've got, uh, you know, weather radar, we have lightning strikes so that you can see uh, where in the country or where on the state, you know, you're having lightning strikes. Um, and it's, it's all, Omnia weather now. Yeah, for sure. Damn. Yeah. yeah. It's like I said, these the people, the people behind this whole thing are way smarter than me. You know, they, they brought me in to be kind of a fish head and to talk to other fish. I have heads. a question, Trevor. For sure. How accurate is the wind setting? Like the wind layer in there? Because yeah, it's, you know, yeah we've been, we've been testing it. We actually have a, uh, Polish Pete, uh, as you guys know, uh, Polish Pete's actually down in Florida right now. And uh, obviously that hurricane's running through there and yeah. he did pull up the Omnia app and yeah, it, it definitely shows, you know, the track of the eye of the storm and, and what side of Florida is getting hit uh, before the other side and that sort of thing. So as of right now, uh, the Omnia premium pro app only has uh, live data. Um, but as we continue to uh, update it, we will add forecasts, future forecasts, so that you can see, um, you know, predictive two days from now, what, what's it going to look like on Lake Erie or anything like that. Um, so this, this particular layer here, this is our vegetation layer, which is also pretty cool. Um, you, can, you can see what parts of the lake have vegetation and others are clean bottom or rocks and that sort of deal. Um, as, as you would expect, a lot of that vegetation is up shallower. Um, and as you get to the middle of the lake, you know, if, if you're deep, there's not going to be vegetation there. So, um, but you can see like in the middle of that, in that bay, there's a point that sticks out and yes, there's vegetation on that point. Um, so 
a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, obviously, uh, some people had the opportunity to get into the, the beta test for uh, Premium Pro initially when we, we first launched it out. And we have uh, water temps on there as well. So you can track water temperature, especially, you know, if you're following the spawn or trying to figure out when the spawn's going to happen, uh, which creeks in a particular lake are going to heat up quicker than others. Um, you know, and, and for us in our stage right now, it's a lot of when are we going to cool down? You know, when is that, when is that cool down going to happen? And when are those fish going to start snapping, you know, where they can start eating real good. So um, really cool stuff. Um, there's another screenshot, Bailey, of uh, water clarity, which is another okay. layer that we have. Um, see I if you can find. I was going to say, whoever's got this grass patch out in the middle of nowhere is probably really pissed off now that there's a feature. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> They're like, I've had it to myself for weeks. Right. <laughs> I was going to ask you this question on the vegetation. Is it like satellite image that gets loaded in or is it from people graphing and like writing notes so you know where the grass is? Yeah. So um, initially this, this was a project, I believe, called Insight Genesis, um, which got brought into CMAP for Lawrence and that sort of deal. Um, but when people were graphing, they were taking like a few points of information uh, from their transducers, uh, depth being one, bottom hardness being another, and then uh, vegetation, presence of vegetation. So as somebody is driving their boat over, that transducer is pinging off the bottom and it's taking all that information. in. so that's where that's where these readings are coming from. Got it. So, this one. Yes, that's perfect. So this one is our water clarity one. And so this is derived off of satellite data. So. Satellites, you know, panning across the United States. Um, so this is Lake Minnetonka right here in the Twin Cities. And you can see the dark blue is very clear water. Um, certain certain bays in the lake are highlighted in lighter, lighter blue. And then you can see that one next to mound is yellow. So this is very accurate. Um, you can see the bay all the way to the west is actually that bay that was shown in the previous screenshots. That's Halstead's Bay. And Halstead's is uh is dirty compared to the rest of the lake you know uh, anybody that fishes tonka frequently knows that halsteads bay is a pretty dirty bay um you know there's there's big ones in there uh, but you're fishing dirtier water um and and that reflects uh, across the lake so um this is like i said this is really cool stuff where you can figure out you know uh which which water is cleaner you know i think of florida during the spawn if it if one side of the lake gets blown out, you can see that that whole side's muddy or this side's going to be clean. Um, but definitely uh, something like I said, this is all just tools that anglers can use to either eliminate the time on the water or they can make their, their practice more efficient. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. There's a, there's another screenshot that I sent over to you. That's like a little river with two different uh, yes. uh, color gradients on it. And um, that, we we wanted to see how accurate this was um yes that's perfect right there so that is prescott wisconsin which is a city right on the border of wisconsin and minnesota and that upper that dark blue river towards the top is the saint croix river and the river to the south of that that runs east to west is actually the mississippi so you can see um where the where the saint croix hits the mississippi there's a giant water uh, water line mud line and uh it's i mean it's visible on google earth and yeah it's it directly uh translates to our premium pro app as well so um, pretty accurate for sure that's pretty nuts so <laughs> basically you're just helping anglers delete all the other apps they have on their phone and just have <laughs> omni app is that it's essentially yeah. what you're doing here yeah, we want to we want everything to be in, in one spot, you know, let's let's yeah. make it easier on everybody. Um, you know, it's it's everything is in one place. You know, if you need to figure out what the weather looks like, um, we've got that. If you want to know, you know, which bays are going to have cleaner water than others, we got that too. Contours, we got that. And uh, we're we're currently working with a uh, I can't I can't name names right now, but we're working with a company that is pretty well known with their, uh, their mapping to, to get contours for every, every lake across the United States. So, um, so that's, that's in the works that should be hopefully available to the public within the next couple of weeks. So are we going to have like Omnia branded mapping chips or something? <laughs> well, you know, a lot of anglers right now are using uh, iPads for graphing and stuff. You know, they have it on the side of their boat or the side of their console. So, Yep. Uh, we think that this could be a tool that somebody just opens up the app on their iPad and they've got this 
all, all day for them because, you know, uh, one of the questions that was posed to us and, and it's funny is how come I can't, I wish I could see, you know, I wish there was an app where I could see wind direction on contour layers. So I know how this point is getting wind blown on it right now, you know? Yeah. And to this day, I don't believe there is that functionality yet. So we are taking that, all this information that we have, and we're going to put it all into one place. So if you're on Erie and there's a point that you really like, but it only fishes really good when there's a West wind hitting it, you know, then boom, you can pull that up, use all these contour layer, all these map layers and stack them. And you can see exactly how the waves are hitting it, how the wind's hitting it on this particular, on this particular day or whenever you're out on the water and uh, help you catch more fish. So are you, are you allowed to say like, what's, what's next? Like what, what aren't you, aren't you going to add on to this? App? Eventually they're going to have a boat symbol on the lake and a <laughs> GPS track you as you're driving around. So you can just have it on your iPad. I'm assuming like, I could see that being one of the next things I'm going to jump right in and say that. I'm sorry. It'll show like a, a grass point and it'll show chatterbait from Trevor Lowe. It's well, right. It's right. You know, I think, uh, <laughs> The, the whole idea behind Omnia or the vision behind Omnia is to be able to provide that in-store expertise uh, online, you know, so it eliminates the need to have to go into a, you know, a big box retailer and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go fish Lake Erie or I'm going to go fish Table Rock or something like that um, in the next couple of days. What's biting? What's working? Um, so when we have our product recommendations that are already fueled by fishing reports, uh, local guides, tournament anglers, all that sort of stuff, you know that the product recommendations are legit. And then you take that and you pair it with the Omnia map layers. And we are working to get this into a predictive model so that we can say, with the way the weather is changing, with the air temperatures that are coming, with the barometric pressure that's coming, uh, with the wind direction that's coming, we recommend throwing this and this depth around these kinds of things and that sort of thing. So we can take all this information, make it into a predictive model for somebody to say, this is what we would recommend you do in the next couple of days. If your trip is on Saturday and today is Wednesday, Saturday is gonna be blowing out of the North, you know, at 10 miles an hour, We're going to have bluebird skies, so on and so forth, low pressure system. This is what we recommend you throw because the water clarity is this, the hard bottom is this, the vegetation present is that. So really cool stuff. So like predictive in regards to like the water clarity too? Yeah. Um, In the sense that, you know, time saver. Yeah. If, uh, you know, if, if the wind's going to be blowing really, really hard for the next four days out of the West, then the East side of the lake is going to be all muddy and gross, you know, so you can, you can tell that, you know, if you can predict that if that side of the lake is going to be really muddy and gross, maybe you don't fish that side. Or if you're going to fish that side, you need to throw like a, a big spinner bait with a big Colorado blade or something like that, or a chatter bait or do something along those lines. But that's, that's kind of the whole premise of this. Is there ever thought of like having as premium pro a layer that takes the different, you know, water clarity, temperature showing vegetation what have you and almost kind of doing um like a smart strike if you will that hummingbird has where they show you highlighted high percentage zones i guess that ever a i thought, think essentially you know i think everything's on the table at this point um call it the know, cheat code <laughs> yeah the the guys here uh the founders are are very uh, very much innovators um and they See they that. are, you know, if, if something piques their interest, uh, you know, especially Matt, Matt Johnson, he, he will go after it at a hundred miles an hour, you know? And so, um, obviously he, he wants to be smart about not just going after everything, but, um, yeah, if there's, if there's an opportunity there, I, I think, you know, anything's on the table. That's pretty wicked. So now, so Luke, like when you were, when you guys were going through this, you know, obviously we're all anglers here, but from your perspective, you know, what, what stood out to you amongst these features? What kind of gets you the most psyched from a, from a planning standpoint? Well, I would say just the water temp and the wind direction. I mean, I got the chance to use a little bit this spring. Uh, I'm, I'm from Mondo Lake, Wisconsin, so we fish Lake Winnebago a lot. Obviously, a huge lake is like 30 miles tall. Um, 
Um, in the springtime, it just in general on that lake, when the wind blows like hard in one direction, that whole side of the lake that blows out is all mud. You might get muddy, fish don't bite. Um, so I got to see that on the app. Like it, it shows where the wind's going and then and the water temp, uh, like the warm, the warm water being in. And then it also shows where the water is clear. So I can just, instead of launching maybe on the west side of the lake, I can just look at the app and be like, okay, there's a big section of clear water on the east side. I'm going to go put it over there. And like, it works for me a couple times this, this spring. So I'll have a The other thing that I'm pretty interested about is pairing the contours with like the, the, the vegetation layer. So mm. I'm going to a new lake, like for example, this weekend I've never been to. Um, I see some contours and mapping that looks good to me, and then I can just see that there's going to be a weed line there. Instead of going and looking around, I can just target those areas where I want to go, try to push the weed line out on a stretch instead of having to guess where they might be, drive around until I find them. So and I think the app in general just saves an angler so much time with all the layers that I can do. Yeah, I think from your guy that uh, works a nine to five, can't get off Friday whatsoever to practice for your your Saturday club derb is one going to love the crap out of this, but all the way up to uh, your average, your guys that are taking off days to fish, your guys that are in the opens, your guys that are uh, on the elites and MLF. This is a tool that everyone can take advantage of um, for the simple, like look at the water clarity and say you got you going up and you have three hours to practice that's all you got it's friday night to go graph a little bit for your saturday club derby. when you're on a small mouth fishery and you see this one part of the lake's been blowing wind on and it's got really it's it's pretty dirty and you can completely avoid that and go check out something else that clarity wise they're actually gonna bite it. like that that is huge like there hasn't i mean guy in the past it's all been assumptions right like guys would have to use their their gut and their judgment from like well, this bank's had a south wind, you know, been blowing on it for the past two days. It's probably pretty dirty, but they don't know 100%, right? Where now they have a pretty strong indicator of if uh, those fish are going to cooperate in an area or not. That's pretty yeah, damn good. We saw a direct correlation to red crest this year, the water temp layer working to a T. And there was a warm water discharge in the lake that not everyone knew about, but the guy that found it and knew where it was. And that's where the warm water was. That those were the guys catch fish. It was on the opposite side of the lake of where everyone thought it was. And that's where the tournament winners and I think like a lot of the top five to ten anglers did really well. And it showed perfectly where the warm water was on our temp layer. Um, that you would never yeah. would have known unless you had driven to both sides of the lake and crafted. That's freaking nuts. <laughs> I mean, Andy and I were talking about it when we, we had you guys on here to talk about premium, right? And the, the added features of temperature and that. And we were saying, if an angler isn't using this right now, that you're crazy. And now we are saying, once again, guys, if you're really not using this right now, you're freaking crazy. <laughs> Plus with the added features that comes with having premium on Omnia, like every order, you're getting money back. Oh, yeah. It's a no brainer. Yeah, Bailey, to that point, um, <clears throat> those that are familiar with premium, obviously it's it's the best value in, in the tackle buying industry. It's, you know, 30 bucks a year. Uh, you get 10% back on every single purchase you make. You get free shipping with no minimums. You can order, uh, you know, a bag of Tanukis or you could buy, you know, 200 bags of Tanukis and you're not paying for shipping. Um, right. And then on top of that, you know, we do special deals to premium only, uh, premium subscribers only. And so um, premium pro on its own, if you're not a premium member yet, is 50 bucks a year, which is uh, super reasonable uh, considering everything that you get. Uh, you get everything that premium has. Uh, so those three things that I mentioned earlier. And on top of that, you get the map layers. And if if you are already a premium member, then it's a, it's a $20 charge and you get you get uh, premium pro map layers for a year and we even eat the cost of extending. Let's just say you're already six months into your premium subscription mm -hmm. and then you upgrade to premium pro. We'll eat that six months and extend an extra six months of your premium pro, uh, your premium subscription just to match sync up with your premium pro subscription. So, damn. I mean, I get this is, this is a no brainer. If you're thinking about this, stop thinking. Just like 
<laughs> this is a steal. Like it's yeah. you're getting all this information at at touch of your hands, like stuff that you'd have to buy a whole separate app for and pay fifty bucks a month to mm-hmm. access this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's uh you know like I said, I think the whole goal of Omnia is to help anglers find success on the water, whether you're a super experienced angler or you're a novice angler. And I think, um, you know, this, this is our effort into making great, great strides in that direction, you know, um, from the angler, like you said, that works a nine to five only has, you know, half an evening to go and try to practice for a, a Saturday derby club derby, you know, and, and, uh, this, this can help him break down water, while he's sitting on the couch late at night after, you know, he's put the kids to bed and he just needs a couple, he's got 30 minutes to look at an app and, and try to figure out, okay, how can I, how can I, you know, put together a game plan for, for Saturday morning, you know, without having to have spend, you know, four or five days on the water. So. Yeah. Andy, for you, a big water, small mouth guide, where do you see this coming into play and what, especially what features, for you stand out the most well first in the springtime like just being able to see where the warmer water is as to cold water because i mean gray lakes when you have wind especially on erie that warm water will shift around a ton in the springtime depending on what creeks are high what creeks are low where the water's coming in at wind but also being able to because i'm a hummingbird guy right like Lawrence, every one of these major manufacturers have a little bit different contours on it. So I can go into CMAP on here now on the Omnia app and compare and contrast what contour lines are to try to find slightly different breaks to see if I can find fish on there. But the biggest thing is, one, I love the wind, real time, weather, and then being able to see the water temp. And even water clarity is huge with smallmouth. And if that's dead accurate, that's going to help find the clearest water you can because smallmouth thriving super clear water so you're going to be able to get more bites based on the clear water over what contour lines you want to fish so there's a lot of good features i think the whole thing can help i'm with it i think all of it is more tools for anglers from an efficiency standpoint um but another thing i think too is this is another tool to help anglers understand where their bites are coming from. You know, like say you went and fished a body of water. Maybe you didn't look at this beforehand, but you went and fished and say you got a concentration of bites in area and you pull up the app and things start to make more sense. And you can also like from, we were talking earlier about, you know, Koya, right. That was had his laptop out after he's on the water and he's taking notes. Uh, you know, same thing that many of us have done with a, a pen and paper, you know, after a day in the water, we're logging our notes this is another thing that can help you detail what you might have in theory, but now can put way more actual data behind where you're like, uh, you know, those windblown bank, you know, whatever it may be, temperature wise, water clarity, you can also, you can use the app now to confirm those, get more accurate data, which can help. I feel like help translate from a knowledge standpoint, moving forward to help you understand your surroundings, which again, I mean, this is, this is like the, the race of, of fishing here, which is how fast can we make this learning curve? It's basically with this is becoming like a 90 degree angle right now. It's this learning curve is getting very increasingly fast um, if you use it the right way. So mm-hmm. I think that's what's super cool about this is it's if you use it right with the different tools at hand and you're willing to have the receptability in your brain to do so. This app's pretty it's sneaky good. Yeah, I think, you know, you're exactly right about, you know, being able to use this to understand why you got bites where you got bites. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the big things that we talk about here in Minnesota is just, you know, when you're fishing vegetation, if you've got a huge, um, a huge, let's just say, uh, flat of vegetation, milfoil, coontail, that sort of deal. Mm-hmm. Um you got to find the hard spots in those, in those huge expansive flats in order to get bites. And if it's the middle of summer and you're out there trying to graph through 20 feet, 15, 20 feet of vegetation, you're not going to see anything on the bottom. And so when you can, when you can use this to see where those harder spots are on your particular body of water, 
then you can go and focus in on those areas when you're out there on the water you can eliminate your time uh or you know you could potentially eliminate the need to get out there right as the ice melts to go and try to graph and find those hard bottoms before the vegetation grows in uh but it, it definitely helps you figure out the spot on a spot you know mm -hmm. yeah and especially like to your point with that on a place that's a grass field and no, it keeps coming back to you as a great tool for research, but also just a simple, great tool for people that don't practice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's making the guys that catch them already without any practice that they some stumble upon something at 10 AM, even more dangerous now because they're going to stumble upon it as soon as they get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or so those guys where they take three out, four hours to figure it out on tournament day and catch them quick. This is, Oh, sorry, boys. You're, they're going to figure it out at 8 AM now. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, uh... You know, another another group of anglers that's kind of underrepresented is uh, bank fishermen. Yes, um, that's oh, a yeah. great call. And with with this app, you know, now if let's just say they do have access to fish large stretches of shoreline or large stretches of banks, they can figure out where on the bank they should be, you know, based off of, you know, contour changes or so on and so forth. So they're not casting, you know, 50, 60 yards, and they've only made it, you know, a depth change of two feet. You know, they could go to a sharper spot on the lake or a lake mm -hmm. with a sharper contour, and they can go and make sure that, you know, if they're only casting out 30 feet, they're going down 15 feet in the water column. So uh, this, this I think, could be really big for bank fishermen as well. Uh, and like I said, I think they're an underrepresented group of anglers in our community because, yeah, not everybody has a boat. Not everybody has a kayak, you know. And probably yeah, arguably the biggest too potentially yeah i mean especially depending on, on what part of the country you're from you know you think mm -hmm. about florida and how many how many guys just pond hop because you can go catch 10 powder hunters <laughs> in every pond i don't need a boat <laughs> right you just got to watch out for the gators yeah. Yeah. yeah just take a kayak out and then they might think your food so yeah have so. you guys seen total off topic and i apologize for this but have you guys seen that video of that kid bank fishing from a pond in florida He's got the reverse camera to show like the, the 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 camera like his fish and the gator comes from behind. Have you guys seen that? Uh -uh. I'll have to send you the video. It's freaking nuts, but it, it's real too. I thought it was fake for a second. It was legit. It's wild. This big gator comes out as he's like this kid's holding this fish. You can tell this thing is probably fed, but yeah, sure. But yeah, to your point, Sounds like great. this is yeah, it could be huge. But all right, well. If we haven't sold people enough on why they need to be getting premium pro, uh, I don't really know what else we can convince you with because you're probably, if you're tournament fishing, you're going to start losing the people that are using this thing. Uh, so it's the ability, I will say too, uh, from a good standpoint, but also costly to my wallet, the uh, uh, how quick I can order tackle now. <laughs> don't tell my fiance. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's very it's dangerous. Not, I'm I can't tell you how many times I've gotten off the water on a guide trip and be like, man, I just went through eight packs of this bait and literally just like type it in. And I'm like, okay, I got it in before a certain time. I'm like, oh, it's gonna ship today. This is awesome. I'm gonna have it in two days because I over I two day ship everything for six dollars and it's to my house literally in two days every time. It, it's it's yeah. it's the best deal in the tackle buying industry and i don't even think it's close so i was out on a lake with a buddy uh recently and we were fun fishing and whenever time i'm fun fishing i always like because i order a lot of tackle but there's times where i order like one packs so just to like try like they're kind of wacky things but just to experiment and i figured out a pretty dynamite bite that i'm not going to say yet because I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping to do it in state championships uh and i only had the one pack and my buddy and i are going back to the ramp you know obviously in our kayaks we're sitting there i'm on my phone we're getting off at the ramp by the time we get back i'm like yep i'll have 10 packs at my door in a couple days and he's like he goes you just ordered it i'm like yeah i just on my app like literally are coming back and got him into to using the app but it's like it's like you started laughing because i'm sitting there just how easy it is you're on your way back yep order tackle we're good where most people probably wait till they got a computer or something like that. You got to use Safari or whatever. That's a kind of a pain where app is dangerously easy. <laughs> so order fishing tackle. It's a Luke's point. 
it was very dangerous, but in a good way. Trevor, pull up his order history. I got <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll go and pull up your order history just to see what that what that ten packs was. <laughs> ah, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> Should be giving that away. <laughs> yeah, not so secret anymore. Well, I'll tell you what, mine is full of flatworms. I'm sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh man, need more brown back or nat- natural shad. Like, yeah, twenty packs at a time. I'd be flatworms willing to bet that packs. flatworms for sure. Uh, Andy probably owns ninety percent of your guys' packs <laughs> from a flatworm standpoint. <laughs> Andy's over ninety percent. It, it, it's horrible. I have those Plano thirty seven hundred deep boxes. I have three of them, one in my garage and two of them in my boat, and they're sorted by color. Because oh, nice. I go through so many of them on a Jeez. weekly basis with clients that I can just go in and grab and be like, okay, I know right where I'm grabbing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you, uh, you, you're talking about, uh, Kyoya Fujita and how, like, when, when you know somebody's on fish, they've got like a, the bottom of the boat's full of beavers or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You go in my boat and like every cup holder is full of, Mega bass, spark shad, three inch IU. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like that's all I throw. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, love it. Hey, sometimes it's better that way. Yeah, you know, it's more simple. But all right, so to round the show out, obviously we got one last question for Luke, but I'm kind of curious for you guys. We're seeing this interesting evolution of baits. Baits coming back because of forward facing sonar, things of that nature. We're watching more baits become more wildly popular because of technology like a Damiki rig or some people call it, you know, the jig head and minnow type deal. Um, I'm curious for you guys in this conversation of it, what do you think is the most important aspect of a bait? Is it going to be color, action, or scent? I'm kind of curious out of the three aspects, what do you think is most important in a bait now that we have forward facing sonar? Um, I'm going to pass that to Luke. I'm going to let Luke answer first. <laughs> Make the new guy go first. <laughs> I'm going to go with just the the size or what it represents. And okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday when I was live scoping, I got fish to eat a bunch of different baits, which were strange. Like they shouldn't have been eating out of the middle of the water call. Just the fact that I could hang it in front of them with live scope, they would bite it. Um, but I did, being from Wisconsin, I love throwing an A-rig, so I tied up a Minnesota rig with a bunch of blades and stuff on it and threw it past a bunch of large knives, and they, they would not eat it. So I think hmm. size, size or shape based on the forage is, in my opinion. Okay. I like that's, that. a, imitation. that's a reasonable answer. Yeah, imitation. 100%. Trevor, what do you think? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, it sounds kind of silly, but yesterday being out on the water with Luke and uh, we were out shooting content for Omnia, um, to that point, I think I think I would probably agree. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if you want to say it's color just so that the fish can see the bait, but I don't necessarily think the action matters as much. Um, like, yeah, we were uh, – Luke, Luke found him – you know, suspended in the middle of the water column in like 20 some feet of water. They weren't holding on to anything. They were just chasing bait, you know, and, and on a side of the lake where I had never, like, this was a, this was one of my little juice holes and I'd never fished that side of the lake before because there's really nothing contour wise that would make you go, dude, I need to go fish this side of the lake. Um, and yeah, they were just kind of onesie, onesie, onesies and twosies, just kind of swimming around chasing big balls of bait. But you know, I, so getting on the live scope, I had a, a little three inch mega bass spark shad tied onto a jig head, you know, and I flipped it out there. I got bit, tail came off, whatever. And I still flipped it out there and I still got bit without a tail, you know? And I, I think it's just a matter of, like I said, I don't think at that point the action didn't matter because all the action that there is on a spark shad is the tail. You know, if there's no tail, it's just, uh, right. But, and I don't think the scent really so soft that that little tail still wiggling as you're moving it. Yeah, potentially, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the stub. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, to Luke's point, I think it's more the bait, the, the profile, 
Um, you know, and I, I feel like watching, you know, the Elite Series and MLF, getting a bait in front of a fish is more important than it is to, quote unquote, get the get the right bait, uh, the right action, the right color, the right smell, the bait fuel, the max scent, blah, 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 whatever you name it. I think if you put a bait in a fish's face right on his nose, they have a hard time just not eating it. <laughs> They're not too I agree. That's, it's kind of a tough question because it's different for all situations. Like smallmouth can be stubborn as heck and you got to have some sort of scent or some difference on there to make a bite. But I agree with Trevor. You, a lot of times you get a, if you hit a fish on the head with a bait, it makes you react. Like kind of a lot of that stuff goes off the bat. You'll do. I got you. Yeah, I think you're gonna you're gonna start to see uh, spinning rods come into play a little bit more than, than they used to, especially with forward facing sonar. You know, um, obviously Gussie's win on the Tennessee River with you know ascended jerk shad, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, to that point, you know, I like I said, this was one of my little juice holes that we went out to. You know, I I smack them on a Carolina rig, a football jig, you know, a big old five inch spark shad on a chicken head or something like that. You know, big big power fishing stuff and they wouldn't sniff they wouldn't sniff a single thing yesterday and you go down to this little three inch spark shad on a jig head and you put it right on his nose and sure enough they bit they bit like right away and it's like you see him you see him on live scope you're casting your carolina rig right on top of them you know you're dragging it right in front of their face but i don't know i think uh you know getting to smaller profile stuff i think that that might be the the, the ticket in the coming coming future. Yeah, I mean, a little cube is not catching fish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's got like, a little like tentacles on it, right? Like, like yeah. <laughs> Andy, what do you think? It's definitely size of bait and matching the hatch to what the fish are eating, but I also think scent plays a huge role in turning negative fish because you can still hit fish on the head and they won't bite. But matching the hatch and matching the right scent to each individual fish when you're scoping them matters so much. Like I found with smallmouth on Lake Erie, I could have the same bait rigged up, right? Three different rods and run three different scents. And you throw the same, you pick one each, each one up and throw it at a fish and eventually they'll fire on one of them. And I don't know if it's because I'm hitting them on the head three times or if it's because it's finally a scent that they want. And it could be three different shad scents, and then I'll just run with that scent until they stop biting it and then switch up again. Hmm. So um, I think scent plays a big key on overly pressured fish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a I'm gonna agree with that. I think in a pressured fishery, I think scent makes the world a difference. Um and in regards to like what Andy's talking about, what he's experienced on Erie, pretty pressured fish and like let's be real, flatworm has zero action whatsoever. freaking ever. It it's, falls over on a drop shot. Yeah, if it doesn't even. Yeah. <laughs> it's but sing. it's still deadly, and I think for a reason because of the one they work they put it, they put in into max scent, but also just from scent, uh, but also dueling with what I, I mean. I agreeing with you guys in regards to I think profile is the one hundred percent the biggest factor in catching fish, um, because there's there's a difference. Like these Ontario fish I was talking about earlier. Uh, it didn't matter what the hell was on your drop shot. If you pitched at them, they were going to come over from 20 yards and eat whatever the hell's on bottom. Uh, but like there's pressured fish like Andy's experiencing where I think scent makes a big difference. Or you talk about uh, like Brandon Lester on Pickwick when they had a super pressured river fishery and he was dragging around a uh, max scent hit worm for largemouth. I think, I think a lot of people overlook scent for largemouth big time. Um, and I don't know. I think I'll say, I say first and foremost profile, but I think scent has a big thing to yeah. do with it. I mean, look at what the Japanese guys are doing with Taku's crack bottle or whatever the heck's in there that I've been scouring eBay for to try and get uh, whatever that, whatever that is like there it's guys are firm believers about it. And there's a lot of sneaky stuff going on at the top level that they won't talk about from a little scent deal, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just thought it was an interesting topic to talk about being that, there, with technology, the cha- the game is changing a little bit again. Um, 
I don't know. Something something to ponder. But it is. I'll let you guys go here. I uh, We will ask Luke his last question of the night. We'll let you guys leave here. Uh, and Luke, that question is, if you get to sit down, have a steak, have a beer with three different individuals, they don't have to be fishing industry. They could be alive a thousand years ago. They could be alive now. does not matter. It could be anybody. What three people are you going to invite and why? Somebody with Wi Fi. I would say... <laughs> what? Sorry. You got us? <laughs> I would say Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Can you hear me? Got you. Got you. Yeah. Okay. I would say Kobe Bryant. I would go. Probably Seth Fighter. <laughs> Even though he's oh, around the office all day. And, um, he's got the last one. Probably Red Farm. Holy crap, that's a dynamic three. <laughs> I've never thought we'd at the same table before. Hmm. Holy moly. Yep. Who would throw the first punch? <laughs> Red Farm. Far one, 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be actually really intriguing. I could just see, I could see Kobe and Brett just kind of like going at it a little bit, and Seth just chilling there, just taking it all in, just having a beer, just like smoking a dart, just like just chilling. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Yo, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever hear a combo like that again. I, I, I will have to say that's probably the combination that has stood out the most. <laughs> you just asked that yeah. question. Oh man, that's pretty good. Well, props, props for. Uh, for that dynamic trio. But, uh, fellas, anything coming up between you guys that the folks should know, whether it's Omnia or, you know, any derbs coming up, anything like that? And obviously, Luke, you're traveling to one, but anything you want the folks to know? Um, yeah, not not a whole lot. I think, like I said, uh, Premium Pro is, is our big, big next venture for Omnia. So, um, you know, definitely, if you're, if you're watching the show, go and check it out. You know, we've got free trials. Uh, for you to use whether you're on android or ios um, so definitely go give that a whirl and and we hope that we hope that you love it as much as we do and and you know if there's any feedback that you have please let us know because we want to hear from from the people uh, we want to incorporate anglers uh, feedback into making this as best as it can be so definitely feel free to let us know you can reach out to uh you know i think our customer service team or whatever and and provide that feedback to us but yeah we're happy to take it but give it a whirl let us know what you think i'll uh i'll be submitting a request to remove my isolated grass patch that is on <laughs> the map for favor i'll That's pay it. you a hundred dollars <laughs> i'll pay you a hundred <laughs> i'll give you 10 percent of my winnings if you remove that no, yeah you can uh you can email me at trevor at omniefficient.com for uh Bailey's secret 10 packs of lures. Hey, I can hey, his order hey. history and oh, oh, it sounds like a fair yeah. trade. <laughs> Start selling your information. Hey, you at least get paid off of it and give me some commission here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck yeah. Well, well, fellas, appreciate it. You guys, as always, for joining on. Luke, it was good to get you on here and hopefully uh, we didn't scare you away and you'll, you'll come back on the show here soon. No, thanks for having me. I hope to be back on again soon. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. Hope to uh, hear about how the derb goes. Go smash them up. And uh, fellas, appreciate you as always. We'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. See you later. All right, guys. Yeah. Take it easy. Just when you didn't think it could get any better, Andy. Oh, yeah. Pretty dang deadly. Agreed. I'm actually very, very curious now to uh... – I was half joking about like the uh, the grass patch deal. Like that's a significant thing this time of year oh, in New York, just to see the accuracy out. of it. You know what I mean? Like just to go see what there is, things to look at, scope out. But definitely a huge research tool that uh, I think is going to really. I, I'm gonna say right now, I think this is gonna blow up. Like it, oh, it's, it's gonna be like the everybody that has the Navionics or One Boat Network app, like this is going to be another one of those, like people are going to have their weather apps. They're going to, uh, they're going to go and, you know, cross-reference between uh, the Omnia app, things of that nature. 
I mean, I could see them even putting in like TVA current information into here, you know, Ooh, other river information into here. Like I could see more of that coming to fruition. Um, but this is might be your one stop shop for just literally just about everything. Oh, it's funny. Like as we're talking about it, I'm looking at like lakes that I like to fish, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was hard over there. Now I got to go look, pull up my hummingbirds and put like a question mark waypoint in to go graph <laughs> what the next time I'm on the lake. Like it's <laughs> must oh. find out. Yeah. It's like, Thank ooh. yeah. Ooh. That's awesome. And then you can see like on some lakes where it'll be a tiny little spot that'll be like bright red. And you're like, huh. <laughs> Light bulb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ding. Yeah. And uh, I mean, for such an affordable price too, and to get all that information, like 50 bucks. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That's crazy. In uh, FYI, no. I may or may not, since you said you're looking for it, I may or may not have found Taku's powder, and I may or may not have bought you a bottle. I may or may not love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to get here to give it to you. So, <laughs> is, is that going to be my wedding present? <laughs> yes. It was only like $6. So. <laughs> yeah. $6. Send me the damn link. I'm going to buy him out of it. <laughs> oh, um, there's none left. Damn it. <laughs> I'm always late to the game, guys. Andy is, he's like my buyer, if you will. He's like, you know, people like have, they have like liaisons, like art liaisons where they're like, they find a painting they should buy. Andy's my tackle liaison. Well, he's like, dude, they're here. I will say they're on I, this crazy website. I think I found the powder. I, can't, I haven't found the juice yet that he soaks the bait in. So that's what I'm still looking for. But I found mm. the powder. So, I have an idea of it. We can figure it out. Yes, we'll experiment and have fun. Oh yeah, that sounds really wrong. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, folks, appreciate you guys as always. Uh, holler at us if you're going to get Premium Pro. Let us know uh, if you've downloaded it. You know what your thoughts are. To reach out to the folks at Omnia, provide some feedback. Uh, good or bad, uh, but let us know if you get that. And of course, you guys know we always have our discount codes to all of our show partners here on the show notes, whether it's MP3 or YouTube. Um, so you guys can save money. Like if you want some lithium batteries, AGM batteries from X2 Power, we have codes for that. Mm -hmm. Codes for Hobie Eyewear Shades if you guys want to save money on sunglasses. And then, of course, saving money on fishing tackle with oh, Omnia. Okay. And now, Blackfish Gear, you can save money on Blackfish Gear with Omnia Fishing. Use our code. Are no, they gonna does Omnia have like every piece of blackfish gear or are they carrying limited amounts? Pretty dang all of it. Let me actually I will do this. I will pull up Omnia as we speak. Let me and I'll oh, share I love, my screen. The best part about blackfish, there's actually two really good three really good parts about blackfish. The, the waterproof gloves for cold weather. Awesome. The booties are comfortable. He's talking about boots, people, on your feet, not yes. actual booties. You can't buy Boot. booties on Omni. You can buy all, almost everything on Omni. You can't the buy The Rage Waterproof Ankle Boot, they're comfortable. They actually have a real sole in them, and you're not going to get Tracking. exhausted feet. Yeah, they're awesome. And then the third – oh, I lost my train of thought. What was my third favorite? I'm a big Xena soft shell jacket guy. Yeah, those are great. Those are great. Oh, Pullovers when it's really, really cold. Um, I'm a big Swift UPF hoodie guy, though. Swift has kind of taken. I love anglers, the anglers on hoodies. Don't get me wrong, but the Swift I think is taken over as my favorite now. I was going to say the shorts. The shorts are the most comfortable shorts. pairs of shorts I've owned. Shorts, I mean, take them golf and take them fishing. Take them your take your lady out to dinner, whatever yeah. it is. But also, they, fit all you know, they got the base layers. Base layers. Ooh, are big the base layers are sweet. Yeah, and, use them uh, for hunting and fishing. It's funny, once like November comes, I usually switch over to that Stormskin Gale like full suit because I have the bibs and the jacket. I'll tell you what, if it's 30 degrees or warmer, you are going to sweat. Mm -hmm. Just a fair warning. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's just about that time here too. I break out the vest. It's almost yep. vest in flannel weather. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We sound like Northerners. Yes, sir. But even for our Southern folk... Take advantage of it. Beanies with palms, 
sweater vests and flannels and jeans and you're pretty much catching bass sound like you're from buffalo <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty much canadian or canadian point. <laughs> yeah. essentially yes. oh man well folks appreciate y'all any uh any anything else before we let it rip here uh at the moment i would say no let's give people an update of what is coming here for the show lots of stuff Yes. Uh, coming up on Business from the Bass Boat here soon, we'll be having Mr. Todd Dreiss from Rec Lending. If you guys have any more uh, questions and such on you know, financing your boat, looking to get into a boat, looking to, um, you know, if you have on boat currently and you're looking to refinance that whole thing, that is the episode to watch. The people to get in touch with, reach out to uh, Rec Lending if you are buying a boat or if you own a boat and you're curious about that kind of thing. Uh, let us let them know that we sent you. But Andy, episode four hundred's coming up. Oh yeah, what like next a couple week. days? Oh my gosh, next week. Oh, but I think I think because it's such a big show next week, we should make it on a day. We should. We have some more things coming up for you guys, basically in store that we need to solidify to have a episode four hundred, but. Regardless, stay tuned to our social media, but it'll be Tuesday night next week. We're trying to make it big for you guys. Tuesday night, next week, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a long one, so hold on. Grab <laughs> grab something. Grab a drink. It's going to be a really good time. We're going to have a lot of fun people on. Uh, make sure you guys come join for our big celebration, uh, and please do not cancel us, depending on what we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah but uh folks as always appreciate y'all and we'll see you on the next episode that is episode 400 peace <laughs>